All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today we're going to pick up a car that I've just agreed to buy, and, well, I'm quite excited about it, actually. It's a 2015 Land Rover Discovery Sport, and I do rate these. Now, the Discovery Sport was the replacement for the Freelander 2. In 2014-ish, they axed the Freelander 2 name and rebadged it. Just to be clear, for the avoidance of any doubts, I thought the Mark I Freelander, which ran from 1998 to 2006, was a steaming pile of excrement with no redeeming features whatsoever. But the Freelander 2 on the other hand, from 06, 07 onwards, I thought was really good. I still think they're really good, actually. If anyone ever asks for my recommendations on a small four-wheel drive car, one that's properly capable, I always say the Freelander 2. They're really good. There is one important thing to mention, though, with the Discovery Sport. The later two-litre diesel and Genium engines are garbage. They're really not good. I thought they were okay initially, but the more experience I get in this job, the more I realise they're just too unreliable. They're too coarse, too rough, and they always go wrong. They stretch the timing chains and then snap them. And also the actual engine block is made from chocolate or cheese, whatever it is, it's, it's not right. So unless you've seen one with proper history, and I'm talking seriously good history, I just avoid them. You might be thinking by now, well, hang on, Matt, why have you bought one if you just said you wouldn't buy one? Well, for the first year or two of the Discovery Sport, they ran it with the old Freelander 2 engine, the old 2.2 litre SD4, and it's quite a good engine. And that is what I bought today, and that's why I jumped at it. It's only done 40,000 miles, it's only had two owners with full service history, so I'm told, and it's been described to me as being in good condition. Now, I've paid £11,500 for this car. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can keep my spend to around 500 so it'll owe me £12,000, and I should be able to sell this for around fifteen five. I had a quick look on Autotrader, and I think for one in, in good condition, with low ownership and low miles, it will do fifteen five, maybe a tad more. So if that is the case then, and I don't massively overspend, I should have a profit here of around £3,500. It means that I can over-allow for a part exchange, we do this often in this job because somebody will come along with a car that they want five grand for and it isn't really worth five grand, it's only worth four and a half. So you give them the five grand, but then of course you've lost 500 pounds from the profit on the car you've just sold. It's quite a common procedure, this. So you do need decent profit margins. Anyway, a decent, healthy three and a half grand profit from this Disco Sport should allow me to do that. And it means that I should net, I don't want to count my chickens, but I should net two and a half grand. So from a 12 grand outlay, it's pretty good going. I'm quite happy with that. I haven't actually seen this car yet, so I'm just praying that it's all it's been made out to be. I'm hoping it's as described. In case you're wondering, by the way, I'm currently driving a 2015 Kia Soul EV, and I haven't lost the plot. I've been doing a video living with an EV for the last seven days, which has been eventful, actually. You'll have to watch that video. Anyway, enough jibber jabber. Let's go and have a look at this Discovery Sport. I'll see you there. Well, we're here, and that looks really good, actually. I think the Discovery Sport's a good-looking car anyway, but that's in bright... In fact, I know the colour name. That is Indus Silver. Indus. I-N-D-U-S. Tragic that I know this sort of stuff, isn't it? That looks good, though. It's an SE Tech. It's got headlamp washers. I think I've done all right here. Just hope there's a clutch in it and no engine lights. It's got the smaller wheels, but they're not offensive. It doesn't have the black pack or anything. In fact, it's got black mirror caps. Maybe it does have a bit of a black pack going on. I can see an English Heritage sticker. That means this has got full service history and they've changed the pollen filter. That's what that means. It's a bit like a National Trust or a uh, protect the lifeboats. I'm impressed. Well, for once, guys, I suppose it's a reflection of the, uh, the world we live in right now. I'm in an EV. So there's no point turning the engine off because it doesn't have one. Let's do a quick vehicle history check then using car vertical. Now it's really important that you do one of these checks before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. It's really easy to use, all you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN. Now in this case with its original Farnell Land Rover plates, it's a Manchester car, Mike Tango 15 Juliet Echo Juliet check vehicle. And what this does, it'll tell us if it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback or has outstanding finance on it. So it just saves you buying a complete lemon. You don't want to hand over your hard-earned cash and then discover that there's outstanding finance on it or it's been in a bump, all that sort of stuff. And this is a really thorough check. It checks databases in 35 different countries and it checks hundreds of millions of cars. By the way, these reports aren't expensive and if you want to save yourself 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do, use my promo code HIGHPEAK or alternatively, click the link below. I feel like we should play the Jeopardy music or the countdown music. 
And the report's ready. So, view report. That is a Land Rover Discovery 2015 diesel. So it hasn't been clocked. There's no outstanding finance. It's never been a recorded bump. Gives us a bit of a write-up about the car. It's never been stolen either. Now, the last known mileage at the last MOT, because it gives you all this information as well, the last MOT was in October 23, so not that long ago, and it had done 38,000 miles. And it only does about 3,000 miles a year. That's pretty good going then, isn't it? Nice low mileage car. You can't beat a nice low mileage car. Most importantly though, it is the 2.2 litre diesel and it's manual. Now 95% of the time I would always go for an auto, but I particularly like the manual gearbox in the Freelander 2 and the Discovery Sport. And also the old Discovery 3. The manual gearboxes and those were just, I don't know, just good fun to use really. We've got a bit of info then about the car. So it was first registered in May 2015, then the ownership changed in Feb 16. So it might have been a demo or a pre-reg. I need to eat something. My stomach's not happy with me at all. There are a few advisor items on the last MOT. So on the last MOT, the offside front shock absorber has light missing of oil. I suspect this has been done somewhere very thorough, very fussy, perhaps somewhere trying to drum up some business. Rear brake disc worn, pitted or scored, but not seriously weakened, and rear inner brake pads wearing thin. So I suppose then, I mean, it's only done 38,000 miles. It's nothing, is it? Or 40,000 miles. I shall run this to my mechanics and get them to put it through a fresh MOT, fresh service, and see what it needs. Let's go and have a look around it then. Okay, then let's get cracking. Now, another piece of good news is that we've got both sets of keys, which is always a nice sign. Do they work? That one does, and that one does, perfect. So it does look quite good in silver, doesn't it? Nice and clean. I always like Range Rovers in silver. We've got a tow bar, which I never like to see, to be honest, but it is that kind of vehicle, isn't it? Only single electrics, though, so that's good. It's actually a Land Rover factory tow bar. We've got matching plates from Farnell Land Rover. It's an SE SD4. Now, they do a TD4 and an SD4. The SD4 has an extra 20 or 30 horsepower, and that's the one that you really want, guys. So, moving on to the tyres, then, we've got a Continental down here on about four mil of tread, four and a half maybe. They were right about those brake discs though, they do look quite ropey and lipped. So they're gonna want replacing. But still, I think we're on with our 500 pound budget. The bodywork looks good. The panel gaps look quite good. The paint all looks fine. Up front, we've got another Continental. Now, four-wheel drive cars should have matching tyres on each axle, otherwise you get loads of issues. That's on about three and a half, four mil, so that's pretty good. Brake discs on the front don't look as bad, so that's a good sign, and the wheels aren't curbed. So we're all good so far. That half the car is quite good. Matching plates, the headlamps don't need a buff, they're all good. They're not Xenon, but we do have headlamp wash, and we've got DRLs or fogs. Front sensors. Another good sign. We've got a black roof and it's possibly, hang on, let me figure out how to work this camera, possibly a pan roof. On this side, we're on about three mil, another Continental. Someone's looked after this car then, haven't they? They put proper tires on it, which is always good. There's a little scuff there, which I can touch in carefully. It's no big deal. And we've got a full house of Continental cross contacts. Perfect, and that, like the other side, is on about four and a half mil. But yeah, those brake discs are quite ropey. It's got the privacy glass, which kind of works actually on a silver car. Well, I like this, quite pleased. What other spec have we got then? We should have a power tailgate. If I press and hold this, there we go. So, it's quite grubby, actually. Ah, it's a seven seat. I don't think they all, they all were seven seats. Oh, this is great news. Yeah, it needs a good valet. It needs a good valet, but... I've genuinely forgotten about the seven seat bit. Over here, we've got toolkits and locking wheel nuts and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, apart from it wanting a good clean, pretty good, I think. Just close this, get out of its way.
Let's head inside then, shall we? Let's go and lock it again. Now ah, we've got original Land Rover rubber mats, which I always like to see. It's the first thing I order when I buy a Land Rover, to be honest. They're quite expensive, but I just think on an outdoorsy vehicle like this, it's what you want. We've got, it's a weird interior this then. So that's cloth, the inner bit's cloth, but most of it's leather. Strange. I mean, in my mind, this is a two-year-old car, and of course it isn't now, is it? It's a uh, eight or nine-year-old car. We've got electric seats. It's all in good order though, this. It's all, all in good condition. I'm quite happy so far. It's just quite grubby. Just dust and stuff everywhere. Two cup holders down there, that's always nice to see. That's a weird looking gear, uh, gear lever. Now, service history then. This is what you want to see. British 4x4 specialists. So, let me just move the camera before I reveal anyone's favourite pet or street where they grew up on. It's come from Berry originally. Now, Land Rovers and Jaguars have an online service record, and you can access this, by the way, in case you're interested, if you go to, I think it's something like oshjlr.com. Just Google that and you'll find it. Oh, well, this is good. Very good. And it's all detailed here. This is proper history. Pages of it, reams of it. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, to be honest. Can you read that there? Indus Silver. What did I tell you? So its first service was at Land Rover at 4,000 miles. Then every single year, it has been to A1 Land Rover Specialists in Bury. So it's been done at 11, 16, 22. This is proper history. 26, 28, 31 and 36, which was done in Feb last year. So it had oil and filter, pollen filter, air filter, fuel filter, wiper blades, key fob batteries, and a pre-summer check. There you go. That's the website you need. Can you read that? Is it in focus? Onlineservicehistory.landrover.com. All you do is type in the chassis number, and if it's got any history, it'll bring it all up. The trouble is a lot of mechanics don't bother filling out that online history so it might have history and it's just not there anyway it's why it's worth going to a specialist really we've got book packs and all sorts of stuff this is great news we do have a panoramic glass roof hang on let me fire this up because it's telling me i've got a low battery they're always a little bit lumpy when you first start them up but actually that's not too bad so service is required in 900 miles we're on smooth FM. We've got sat nav. Reverse camera or not? No camera, just sensors. Heated seats. No heated steering wheel though, it should be there, but it's not. Still, you can't have everything, can you? We've got lane keep assist or whatever it's called. Oh, we've got powerful mirrors. Oh yeah, I knew that obviously because they were they were in already. Old piano black's a bit a little bit scratched down here, but not the end of the world. I always quite like the design of these interiors. There we go. My blind works as well. Well, unfortunately, I haven't found any goodies in here. I haven't found any uh, comedy glasses or clown shoes or anything. It's all quite sober. Should we take this for a drive then and see how it performs? I've got high hopes for this one. Just depress my clutch and it feels nice. Oh, we've got a quick clear windscreen as well. This will sell, this is money in the bank, this. Right, let's get going then before that barrier closes. We don't want that, do we? The theme from Beaches, depressing film. And we made it. This is a nice car. When, when I get this from the Valators, it's gonna look like a, a new penny. The other good thing is we've even got a quarter of a tank of diesel. I always say this, don't you? But when someone trades in a car and it's on fumes, you just think, how mean are you? How stingy that you've just completely ran it dry? 
but this isn't. Someone's actually looked after it. So it needs a service and an MOT. I get my mechanic to update the online service record. I get them to replace the rear discs and pads. This is good though, this is good. Steering wheel feels nice. Everything seems to work so far. My heated seat's getting nice and warm. Oh, bugger. There we go. Nearly got T-boned then by the 383 to stop, but just about to say there's an annoying rattle, but it's my key rings. We're all good, no rattles. This is why I like this particular engine and gearbox setup. It's really strong, it pulls like a train. And the gearbox is nice and precise. So far then, so good. What else can I tell you about this car then? There's not an awful lot else to say. I'm just over the moon that I haven't spent 11 and a half grand on a lemon. Saying that, I don't want to get too cocky. A mechanic will call me in two days time, won't she? And say, oh, your, your turbo's leaking or your, uh, or your head gasket's blown. That shouldn't happen really, because they are quite reliable. There's no rattle from the dual mass flywheel either when you depress the clutch. Let's talk cost then. So, 11.5 into the car. Uh, service and MOT, it had a full service 4,000 miles ago, so it's only gonna need a minor. That's gonna cost me 100 quid, best part of. MOT 40, there's 140. Rear brake discs and pads, probably the same again. So we're talking 280 there, 70 on a valet. What else do we need? No point in replacing the plates because they're originals and they're in decent nick. Is that it? 350 quid. This won't do, will it? This isn't gonna be an overspend at all. You'll have to leave this with me then, but this should be a really quick turnaround. I might even have news that I've sold it by the time you see the end of this video. So I'm gonna to head to my mechanics right now, then get it valeted. And that's about it. Unless, of course, they unearth some problems, which is possible, isn't it? But let's stay optimistic, shall we? Right then, I'll catch up with you in a week's time. I'll see you then. And we're back in my Indus Silver Discovery Sport. You know, on this channel, I try and feature the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, most of the time it's the bad and the ugly, but there are some good ones. And this Discovery Sport, I'm pleased to say, is one of the good ones. After our last little drive in it, I knew it was a decent car, but you never really know until you get it up on a ramp. I took it down to my mechanics and I asked them for a service and an MOT using genuine parts. I also asked them to update the online service history, which they've done. I also said it will need rear brake discs and pads. They were quite ropey. And that was about it. I said, just check it over and let me know if it needs anything else. Anyway, literally a day later, my mechanic called me and she said, that is a Minter. It didn't need anything at all, barring the brake discs. I asked them about one of the front shockers because on the last MOT it was an advisory item, but she said it wasn't leaking, so I'm guessing the previous MOT tester might have been very thorough. But yeah, no issues at all. Now, if you remember at the start of this video, I gave myself a budget of £500, which is always optimistic, isn't it, with these videos? But I think we're on target. In fact, spoiler alert, we are on target. From there, then I picked it up and took it over to the lads at Tameside Detailing for a full detail valet. It was quite a clean car already, but just a bit, a bit dusty. Anyway, 24 hours later, I picked it up from there this morning, and it is like a new pin. It looks mint. I'm quite enjoying driving it. I don't often enjoy driving a manual car, to be honest, these days, but it's a very good box, this. I got it back to work and took some photographs of it, and I've got it advertised for, you ready for this? This will leave me a very healthy profit margin. I've got it advertised for 15995 I loaded the car onto my website, so I typed in the reg and the mileage onto my Autotrader dealer portal system, and I was thinking this was a 15 and a half grand car. But when I loaded it, it said suggested retail price 16 one something. So I thought, right, result. I'll try 15,995, and then I've got myself that green price marker. Good price. So that's what I pay Autotrader for, isn't it? It doesn't often work in my favor though. But anyway, there we are. So I'm quite pleased for once to report, hopefully, I don't want to count my chickens, a decent profit margin. Now I have already had one inquiry on this and the guy was asking about a cam belt. Now I know on this 2.2 litre turbo diesel, it's due at 10 years or 150,000 miles. Now of course, it's nowhere near 150,000 miles, but it's a 2015, it's coming up for nine years old. So time-wise, it'll be due in the next 12 months. So at least with a decent profit margin, it means I can do something like that and I'll still make some money. I only wish this job was this easy all the time. It really isn't. It's just fluke more than anything. 
if I went out to try and buy one of these cars at trade prices, chances are I couldn't find another one like this, especially with this sort of service history and all that sort of stuff. So it is a bit of a lottery. Hang on a minute. We've got an evoker that's quite impatient. Come on then. There we go. The whole used car business is a bit of a roller coaster ride. Sometimes you make money, sometimes you lose some. What I'll do now then, as always, is park up some of my scenic and I'll talk you through my costs. In fact, here I'll do. We're in a four wheel drive, aren't we? Oh, oh no, that. Got this stuck already. I can feel myself sinking, right? I won't be here long. Okay then, so rear brake discs were £83.96. Rear brake pads were £33.06. Oil filter, £12. Oil, £38. Labour, £125. An MOT test fee of £40. So my total was £390.42. On top of that was a valet at £70. So my total is £460.42. Which is 30 odd pounds short of my £500 target. So it'll owe me just shy of £12,000. Like I said, it's on at 15995 If I've got to do something like a cam belt, there's 450 maybe £500. I know they're a bit pricey on these. My brother had one done on his Evoke last week, and it's, well, it cost me about 450 quid. So I know it's the same sort of cost. And I think that's about it. So all I've got to do now is find it a nice home and hope that I'm not stuck on this boggy. Oh, no, we're, we're moving. We're moving. We're in a Land Rover. Right guys, well thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. Have a good weekend.